So older, and I said this before, but I think it bears repeating, that older adults are more likely to be prescribed multiple medications, many of which are taken long term. Um, so, and that's by multiple prescribers. And uh, again, this is something that's like very important to know and kind of to be expounded upon. Um, so again, this is another scary slide to me when I read this. 90% of seniors um, take one medication. 40% take more than five medications. Um, and 12% take more than 10 medications. Um, so, I personally take like three medications, two of which are over the counter, and it's hard enough for me to remember to take all of those at the same time every day. Um, even if I set an alarm on my phone twice to remind me and my computer reminds me. Um, so, the, I mean, that is pretty straightforward. But again, working somewhere where we're managing people taking medication, um, some people having like 17 or 20 medications and they're all prescribed for um, different times of day. You have to take them with different foods. You have to not take this one with citrus. You have to take this one with milk. You need to eat this much. You have to take this one on an empty stomach. Um, so that can be difficult enough with one or two medications, but with almost half of older adults taking more than five medications, that can become um, daunting, to say the least. So, um, and then 12% take more than 10 medications. So that's, again, a lot of medication to be managing, especially when you don't, um, don't necessarily have the assistance necessary to be able to manage that medication. So um, medication management can play a lot into kind of what addiction looks like for older adults. Um, there are services that can help with this, but getting in-home services or getting extra services costs money, um, and insurance coverage is, is troublesome when it comes to things like that. Um, there are resources like uh, pharmacies can sometimes blister pack medications, like CMH blister packs medications, which seems to be um, pretty helpful for some people. Um, when I say CMH, I mean community mental health, by the way. Um, but there are, this can also be a place where social workers and caregivers and people who are kind of in the periphery of medical treatment that aren't necessarily the prescribing doctor um, can come in and help with medication management because again, a lot of older adults become accidentally addicted to medications that they're prescribed. Um, so that can be um, problematic, obviously. So those over 65 comprise um, 12 to 13 percent of the U.S. population, and this is rising, um, and consume roughly 30 to 40 percent of all prescription medications. Um, so if you can imagine that, um, like the slides said earlier, that 17 million older adults are taking benzodiazepines, um, that can obviously that's a large number. So. 30 to 40%, to 40%, so I mean almost half if we're taking a stretch of all prescription medications that are given out in this country are given um, to people over 65. Um, and we all know, or hopefully we all know how big the pharmaceutical industry is. There's ads everywhere. There's you know a new medication every day or more than that. Um, so I think, again, it's important to understand kind of the breadth of the problem here um, and how much older adults are being exposed to a lot of medications taken long term by multiple prescribers. Um, you switch doctors. Uh, again, there's this huge lack of communication kind of compounded by um, just the simple fact that older adults are, as you age, you're going to have medical problems. And those medical problems are typically going to be treated by medication. <laughs>